So I read The King of Battle and Blood by Scarlett St. Clair. And um, I got this book from a list of, I'm really trying to read more fantasy. I generally don't read fantasy. It's, it's not like I hate or anything. It's just a lot to get into. I mean, the world building and everything, it's just a lot. So um, generally I'm not like gravitating toward fantasy. Also, like I've said before, I read for, you know, escapism. My life is wonderful and great, but reading, it's like watching a show. It's just one of my ways to kind of decompress after a long day. And um, I'm a busy lady. I'm a stay-at-home mom and I ain't going to school. So reading a story like science fiction or some fantasies, getting into all that world building is a lot. The politicalness of it is a lot to, you know, sometimes like, I can't remember what happened the last time I read the book. You know, I sit down, I set it down, and it's like everything that is gone from my brain, you know. So I just generally am not reading a lot of fantasy. So I thought one way, one nice way to be able to get into it is maybe to read like a romance fantasy because in general, in my opinion, romance fantasies are shorter or they're easier to digest because it's not quite so much political business and a lot more romance, which romance is so easy and it's one of the things I read a lot. Um, so I looked up a list of what I thought standalone romance fantasy and or whatever, fantasy romance or whatever you want to call it <clears throat> um and the king of battle and blood was on there and it was said it was a um it just had a tiny little it wasn't the synopsis it wasn't anything it was just like it wasn't even the blurb it was just saying like this is about a um you know it's set in a fantasy world and there's a uh, vampire king who pretty much takes the woman hostage the girl hostage and she's like uh, a warrior queen and blah 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 kind of enemies to the lover situation and I was like okay cool great so I started reading it <laughs> if you're my parents please stop watching right now this book was low it was very heavy on sexual activity and thinking about sexual activity and uh, sexual responses physical responses <laughs> okay so uh, let me just <laughs> I don't even think I'm gonna give a synopsis to this book because it wasn't until I was like six seventy eighty percent through that I really was like oh this is kind of Beauty and the Beast a little bit you know which I don't mind I love me some Beauty and the Beast retelling but um it was it was a lot like that she was you know taken hostage to save her own father her kingdom or whatever um by this beast and you know she maybe has Stockholm syndrome and like wants to kill him but then Stockholm syndrome you know it kicks in and she's actually falling in love with him um <clears throat> Let me go over the pros really quick. Pros were Adrian. Adrian was, and this is the guy, by the way. Adrian was a perfect, <laughs> he was so good. He was awesome. There's something really great about, you know, I read a lot of Grumpy Sunshine. I read a lot of, you know, the classic stereotypical Mr. Darcy situation. There's, some, there's a time and place for that, and I love that. But this guy, Powerful enough to feel like he never had to prove himself. Confident enough to feel like he never had to like lose his temper or be short with her. Loving enough to like simply be sweet to her when she was being a number one B word. Um, he was the epitome of perfect, patient, I would kill for you. And not only would I, I have and I will continue to. Um, he was a devoted lover in every sense of the word. So I liked him a lot. The plot mainly I liked. I thought it was fine. Um, the world was not my favorite. Um, now number one, okay, so I guess I'm moving into the cons. But before I say that, this book, as I was reading it, it reminded me of two things. Number one, it reminded me of Twilight. And, I, and that only reason of that is because that is the only vampire book I've ever read. Now, obviously it's different. That was contemporary, um, set in the real world. This is, like, could not be more different than that. Um, but there were some of the vampire aspects that were, like, Stephanie Meyer made this up about vampires, not... Like, this is not vampire lore. Um, but this was like, you know, my nose is attracted to them. But they're sexy! Um, 
Um, and among other things like he's 200 years old exactly or something really close to 200 years old and um, he has this like instant connection with her but I mean if you read the book you know about that but the other thing so it did remind me of Twilight just because it was like okay hot sexy vampire meets human girl falls in love other thing was it also really reminded me of, and I'm really showing my cards here, but some Finley Finn, <clears throat> um, some Finley Finn books that I've read. Um, namely, I don't actually know all the books that she writes, but I read a few of her uh, orc books. This reminded me a lot of that. The Insatiable um, doesn't make sense no logic to it. Um, draw that the, that the woman, the main character, felt for this other being from the moment, from the from the jump, was like, hmm. <laughs> so that really reminded me of the magic that happened in the orc books of like female women or just female women. Human women were just, you know, they couldn't help it. They were just so attracted to the, the perfect whatever. If you read the book, you know what it is, but the perfectness of the orcs. Um, now, some of my issues with this book. Oh, God. Let me just say, I gave this four stars, I think. I liked it and I couldn't put it down. I read from like 20% to 70% in one sitting until 2 a.m. I mean, I was like, it was, it gripped me. It was really good. But it got a little worse near the end and I just overall didn't love it. I really liked Adrian, but, you know. So, oh, also in the prose section, I'll say, I did like the main girl in a lot of ways. I mean, I know some of her badassness was a little bit over the top, but I liked how she was a little bit morally gray um and it wasn't just like i'd kill for him but she was like a very much queen raised to be a queen that was obvious the way that she carried herself and the way that she spoke but also um you know she in the sense that she would kill and die for her kingdom that she would kill and die for her people and that she was very loyal to you know whoever and um i liked that she was like actually badass not like i'm different kind of in a uh, fair uh, way um but she was actually she actually was she actually was different <laughs> um and we'll get back to some of those scenes later but so some things that i didn't like about this book were number one this is page two okay page two i really he was everything i thought this is she's talking about some dude I really, he was everything I thought I'd wanted in a man. Ruggedly handsome with a body forged for hours by training. His uniform, a tailored navy tunic and trousers with gold embellishments and a ridiculously dramatic gold cape, served to accentuate his presence. He had a crown of thick, dark hair, and I'd spent a few, a few too many nights with those strands wrapped around my fingers, body warm but not a light. Body warm but not a light with the passion I'd really longed for. In the end, Commander Killian was a mediocre lover. It had not helped that I did not like his beard, which was long and covered the bottom half of his face. It made it impossible to detect the shape of his jaw, but I guess he had a strong wind that matched his presence, which was beginning to grate on my nerves. It starts there with a like, oh, so they've had sex before, and she's had sex and she is thinking about it. To, I mean, it's like every single page she's thinking about it or talking about it or something. Okay, there's, there, there's, there's. She is a horny girl, okay? That's just all I have to say about it. She's a freaking horny girl. Um, from the jump. Not even with the main character when she meets the main character. Before before she meets the main character. She's horny from the jump. That was kind of annoying. It was a little, it was a little heavy handed. It was a little bit heavy. It was like, okay, what's the point of this? Um, I know that we're trying to establish like later down the road a little bit of like jealousy. Possible jealousy for, you know, from Adrian to this dude that she used to sleep with. But it was dumb. I didn't like it. Um, also, they had a lot of uh you know they slept together a lot once they got together and or i mean well you know they didn't make you wait for it at all which okay it's fine it was like marriage of convenience kind of and they had to consummate it and then whatever they're married anyway and they're both like kings you know they're both royalty so it's like actually kind of important even though um he can't have kids so what's the point anyway but um it did kind of seem like okay so i guess they have to sleep together like pretty early on and then like they'll fall in love later that's fine you know is telling about her an arranged marriage so that's fine but 
I mean, they were like so attracted to each other. I mean, they were like crazy attracted to each other. And yet she hated him and he like kind of didn't like her either or something. Um, and so it was like, uh, it's a little hard to believe. Like even before they slept together, they were so crazy about each other physically. Um, that it didn't really work very well because it was like, how can you be so insane about somebody? Um, and also like really dislike them. <sighs> it just didn't make sense. But anyway, I really liked both. Well, I mean, beside her like insatiableness, I did like both characters and I thought that the plot was fine. Um, Another one of my issues was the end was not as hard hitting as they maybe wanted it to be. And big spoiler right here. So when she, when her dad turns on her, that was like, oh, the, mm, that was good. But the witch thing, like, I don't know if I was just like not paying good enough attention or what, but I like couldn't get a grasp on quite the history of around the witches and stuff. No, I didn't realize until I literally finished the book and it said, read the next book, which hasn't come out yet, that this was not a standalone book. I thought this was a standalone book and I'm thinking they're doing a lot of world building for a standalone book. And then I thought it was like, okay, there's gonna be loose ends, but that's fine. Like there's loose ends, but but it's okay. Cause there's a lot of not loose ends and I, you know, the story is pretty well rounded and I thought it was just gonna end. No, there's another one. Which I'm like, I don't think I wanna read another one because this was, you know, the thing about this book that was so good was like finding out the mystery of his past um, and then falling in love. I mean, that was like, what else is there? I don't want, I don't even want to read another thing. Now, okay, so the girl, first of all, him like killing people for her and just like all the time being like, whatever you want, lady, <laughs> kill somebody, whatever, whatever, in her honor, blah, blah, blah. It was great. Boy, do I, I'm like, okay, yeah, nice, 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 nice. This is a very, you know, fantasy thing. It's like, I'm gonna go back to contemporary where it's like, and I stood up for her in like a corporate meeting. This was, this is legit stuff, you know? Um, so, <clears throat> so I did like that. And she also did that. Okay, so when that dude came and tried to sell his wife to the king as a concubine, and she uh, literally killed him right there. Oh, so badass. So that's what I mean about morally gray. I mean, she was like, oh, you're gonna sell your daughter? I'm gonna behead you uh, right now. That was nice. Um, something I didn't like or didn't make sense was how the like courtiers and all the other people were like, talk about how much they'd slept with him and like how much he played around when he apparently didn't at all. I was like, what's the point of adding this to the story? We already know she's a jealous lady. Um, we don't need to be making her more jealous. The other thing was, I could have done without the bloodletting. The I could have done without the, you know, feasting. Yeah, vampires eat people, okay. But did they have to make it sexual? Okay, <laughs> like, I just felt like it was like, why are we having to make her jealous so much? I mean, it's not that hard to make a girl jealous of the king for whatever, you know, everybody admires him and loves him and blah, blah, blah. We didn't have to actually have people, I mean, the way that, <laughs> I just hated it. I just hated the va vassals or whatever they called them. I just did not like that. Part of the story didn't make sense. And also they made it sound like the bloodletting was like, such a big deal. And then they did it once for like a second. And then she had like, you know, which I didn't understand why that was what caused her to get her memory back. It didn't seem like it made sense to me because they had never bloodlet before because she had never known him as a vampire. Um, so I don't know, I just didn't get that. Um, but I did think like the, the past history was cool and stuff. Um, and like, what was that part where she was in the library and she had like, like, was that a memory that she had where she, she saw Dragos? I just didn't understand about that. Probably was a memory. Um, so anyway, I thought it was good. I do like this, you know, like eternal love, like he would do anything for her. I did like that. It was cool. I liked the side characters a lot. I thought that they were funny, fun, cool. Um, in general, I liked the vampire lore in this book. Here's one thing I didn't like. Apparently he was blonde with like wavy, maybe ringlets, long hair. I do not stand for blonde adult males. How often do you see a blonde male who's over the age of like 25? Um, like never, okay? So 
I just don't like blonde hair. I just don't like blonde hair. I mean, when they say blonde, I'm thinking blonde. Not like, oh, you could maybe possibly maybe call me a blonde. No, I'm thinking like Legolas blonde. Which, but to be frank, this book, I felt like it, I couldn't decide what it was. Was it fantasy with like a really cool story or was it like um, something that you would see on r slash uh, paranormal erotica? <laughs> it could have been like Dracula fan fiction that you find on AO3. Yeah, it just, that's what it read like, okay. The exhibitionism. What was the purpose of that? Anyway, whatever. Four stars. I enjoyed it. We'll see. So anyway, that's what I think about that book. Let me know what you thought. Uh, goodbye.